各位嘉宾，早上好。咱们这个今天上午的 ，Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We will now begin this morning's conference. Yesterday we talked about technological innovation, policy, and model change based around the one road, one belt strategy. Many speakers during their presentations put their focus on the one belt, one road strategy. And this Silk Road strategy is purely based on logistics, i.e. the import and export of commodities. Logistic industry is growing rapidly in China while trying to identify the new room for growth for the logistic industry. We understand that import and export will be the new growth point for logistic industry ever since 2008. There is great volatility in international trade. So far, the U.S. economy is stabilized a little bit, and the European economy is still in trouble. Ever since 2011 and 2012, uh, there is a downward trend in the import and export volume in China. But the international transaction volume picked up a little bit just recently. But for auto logistics, what kind of challenges and opportunities we're facing in this uh, Silk Road, in the context of Silk Road strategy. What new technology and what innovation we can apply to boost the automobile logistics industry? How to seize the opportunity and face the challenges? Before half past ten, I'll be the chairperson of the first session of today's conference. My name is Zhang Xiaodong. I'm a professor from Beijing Jiao Tong University. Uh, the uh, second session of this morning's conference will be chaired by Ma Zhengrong, the executive vice president of China Automobile Logistics Association of CFLP. So this session is devoted to the discussion of uh, policy and challenges for automobile logistics. We have a total of three discussions and panelists during this session. The first panelist is the deputy is the direct is the director of the Policy Research Center of China Automobile Technology, Mr. Wu Songquan. Our second panelist is Mr. Gao Feng, the president of the and general manager of China Railway Special Cargo Automobile. The third panelist is a host. He's uh, Mr. Wang Weirong, the vice uh, district governor of the Chengdu Economic and Techno Technological Development Zone. So we're quite interested in uh, some of the policies uh, related to import automobiles. So our first speaker, Mr. Wu Songquan, will give you presentations on uh, the related policies on import and export automobiles and its future prospects. Over to you, Mr. Wu. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really happy and honored to have the opportunity to attend today's conference. And I'd like to avail myself of this opportunity to give you presentations on the policies related to the import and export of automobiles in China and its future outlook. As a researcher, I'd like to uh, share with you my observations and my analysis. I do hope that by listening to my presentation, you'll be able to get some food for thought. Uh, 
Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the uh, import automobile policies and its future. And the second part of my presentation is devoted to the export automobile export policy and its future prospect. Uh, this PPT depicts the history of the automobile import in China. We started to import automobiles in the 1950s. In the past 60 years, the uh, import automobiles market share in China changed changed greatly. Uh, in the 1950s, the import vehicles accounted for almost 100 percent of the domestic market, and then it dropped down. And later on, uh, the market share for import vehicles picked up. So what happened in 2015? In 2015, the main theme of the 2015 is uh, destocking. In uh, January 2015, most of the imported brands suffered a negative growth compared with the same period of, of the year before. Secondly, uh, we uh, witnessed a, a general decline in the import volume of the imported vehicles, no matter whether it's SUV or sedan cars or whatever. If you take absolute, if you take a look at the absolute numbers, uh, the sedan cars are still the mainstay of the imported vehicles, and SUV plays a critical role. We noticed uh, that uh, there is a fierce competition between different imported cars, uh, Japan, United States, and, uh, and Germany are three main automobile exporters to China. And in 2015, uh, there is a significant increase in the parallel import. That was because of some favorable policies. Uh, last year, China uh, imported 114,000 cars as parallel import. Uh, most of these parallel cars, parallel imports are from uh, United States and the Middle East. Uh, Toyota accounts for the lion's share of this parallel import, accounts for, accounted for 60 uh, percent. Land Rover, Mercedes-Benz, they come in the second and third place. So parallel import means the uh, import channels other than the import uh, channel dominated by the OEM. They are non-authorized channels. They can uh, source the cars from the United States and uh, the Middle East and export to China directly. This is what we call the parallel import. Uh, last year, uh, the general import volume of the, the imported cars declined, while the uh, imported cars with the dis engine displacements ranging from 1 liter to 1.5 liters increased. Uh, this is the import volume by different brands, according to the Chinese Custom House. Uh, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, Lexus, and Toyota, they are the top four importers in China. This is import volume by nation. From a policy point of view, on this slide, you can uh, see some of the uh, policies related to Im imported vehicles. The Ministry of Commerce and the General Administration of Industry and Commerce they are responsible for the sales management of the imported cars, and the Ministry of Commerce is responsible for giving the import permit, and the Ministry of Finance is responsible for taxations, while the uh, 
Quality Inspection uh, Administration is uh, responsible for the inspection, 3C certifications, and so on and so forth. There are different types of uh, policies. One is just strategic policies. They point out the uh, directions for the future development of the imported cars. And also the other types of uh, the policies are the technical policies related to different kinds of technicalities of the imported cars. Uh, uh, another part of the policies related to FTA, and also there is a part of the policies uh, regulating the parallel import. Oil consumption is also another factor that will impact the future growth of this industry. In, in other words, for all the cars to be sold in China, including all the manufacturers, and also the local cars, JB cars, and also the imported cars, they have to reach a certain standard by 2015. The limit to be reached eventually will be 5 liters per 100 kilometers. This will be occurring during the next five years from 2016 to 2020. I think this will be another very influential factor if you take a look at this chart, you can see the oil consumption and the CO2 standard comparison between China's cars and also the imported cars. Uh, we, of course, are dropping down by a wide margin. Uh, it is uh, forecasted that for the next 10 years, the improvement margin every year is about 6.2 percentage points, which is a little bit higher than Europe or America being 4.5 percent and 4.7 percent, respectively. Uh, in my understanding, about one third of the uh, manufacturers in China actually cannot reach the standard so far or at the moment, but in the next five to ten years, they will do something to change the status quo. And also for the uh, finished vehicles import. In 1994, the Chinese government has uh, regulated the management of uh, the uh, port layout in China for all the finished vehicles. And by uh, the end of last year, so far we have approved a total of about 19 ports for that purpose. And also, uh, these are some of the uh, uh, regulations or the documents issued by the government, especially issued by the Ministry of uh, Commerce, the uh, General Administration of Industrial Commerce, to govern different aspects related to the sales of cars. So these several documents have been quite influential in this industry, changing dramatically the relations between the dealers and also the uh, OEMs. So this type of uh, way of uh, breaking away from the monopoly will be doing some benefit to the consumers. Sixthly, uh, about a parallel import pilot projects. Uh, ever since 2014, the Chinese government has launched this uh, new concept, and uh, different type of uh, policies have coming out. And uh, here I've listed all the, these different types of uh, regulations and policies. Probably this is uh, not a, a complete list. And I think around 20 documents have been issued. You, so you can check online for those detailed description, descriptions. So if you take a look at uh, the other parts of the world, uh, I think that Japan is well ahead of us in governing the parallel imports. So if the price of the cars through, through regular channels can be competitive, that will reduce the quality of the parallel cars. But for parallel cars, you know, they have some inherent uh, shortcomings. But for the uh, OEMs, they can launch their own authorized stores to cover and to ensure quality and service professional. So this chart tells you a little bit about the maintenance technologies and the policies. And in, from 2014 to 2016, uh, a lot of uh, laws and regulations have come out. So we have uh, made some references to the international practices, talking about the future. The policy outlook is as follows. In the long term, FTA strategy will deeply impact the imports of cars. For example, the tariff, because FTA will impact directly 
the level of tariffs. For all the FTAs we have assigned, uh, the impacts are felt on a limited basis, but in the future, its impacts will be extended. Secondly, for anti-monopoly issues, uh, as I said, the NDRC has a guideline for uh, anti-monopoly uh, cases and practices, and also the um, method for the management of the uh, automotive sales in China will also change the uh, relationship between the dealership and OEMs. Thirdly, uh, in order to further facilitate the uh, parallel import business in the future, uh, different government organizations will change and revise or optimize the ongoing or incumbent management details or the management regulations, especially for the finished vehicles bonded uh, practice and also the uh, automatic import permit. So for the imports, uh, two things will be critical. First of all, to stop monopoly. Secondly, to cancel the restrictions for the branded sales. And for parallel imports, also there are many uh, new regulations coming out governing, for example, the uh, tax collection, uh, the uh, issuance of the automatic import permits, and also the uh, allowance of those are parallel import car companies within the free trade demo zones for some new factories. And in the future, new details will be coming out. Uh, here in this connection, I want to also mention a little bit about a new regulation for the governance of the transaction over carbon emission rights drafted by the uh, NDRC. The purpose of doing so is, of course, for a green world to cultivate and develop a carbon transaction market to give full play to the market forces to play a decisive role in redistribution of the resources for the emission of uh, greenhouse gas. And also, what is relevant to us is that uh, all in the future, all the uh, car selling uh, companies will have to undertake their due responsibilities for the environmental concerns. And uh, for those big companies in the Chinese market, uh, you have to provide new energy cars as part of your responsibilities. Uh, we call it pure electric cars, uh, halves of P halves plug-in hybrid, plug-in electric vehicles. So these are different cars uh, which are mandatory for those uh, car companies to launch or to uh, sell in this market. Otherwise, it will be barred from transaction in this market according to the regulation to be issued by the uh, competent authorities for the carbon trade and a carbon transaction in the state council. Uh, I think that uh, these few years have seen really a lot of uh, activities going on there for the transactions, for the governance of the uh, carbon uh, emission management. So our team has also been an active uh, member for the research over these uh, policies. And also, this year, still, we are facing a very uh, challenging year. Probably for the whole year, the import volume will be still around minus 10 to minus 15 percent. About export, yes, indeed, we have seen rapid growth of the exports. These two uh, diagrams show you the uh, export volumes of uh, finished vehicles and spare parts. I will skip those details. But here are some of the key words. First of all, the export volume of finished vehicles dropped by a substantial margin. So on the right, you can see those uh, export uh, figures, especially for the passenger cars, the commercial cars, and other different types of uh, special cars. Uh, secondly, Given the fact that uh, the, in the traditional market we have seen a uh, generic uh, uh, landslide, but for those uh, one belt, one bu road countries and regions, we have seen rapid growth. So these are some of the countries that we saw increase of the cars and the export volumes by different degrees. And also, uh, 
On this chart, you can also see that uh, for the spare parts and accessories of the cars, there has been some uh, uh, dropping down by slight margin, but mainly uh, it's uh, imported, it's exported towards those developed countries around, around the world. And this is the policy framework, and I will skip all those policies that have been launched during the 12th five-year plan. For the export management system, it is required that uh, the uh, manufacturers need to give due authorizations for the export purposes. And by, according to different conditions, the OEMs can uh, authorize different uh, export trade companies. So in this connection, we have a lot of uh, key projects, including the projects based upon the export rebate of tax and also the basis construction, governing such categories like finished vehicles, key components, engines, and many others. And also we have the uh, uh, registration system and also for the uh, approvement system. So there is a shift from the approvement system to the registration system, as everybody has already known. And in 2015, especially since the 18th Party's Congress and also the National People's Congress, we have seen uh, some new regulations and the documents coming out from the State Council and the Central Party. And uh, these are all important for us to further uh, reinforce our capabilities and also to uplift the technological content and quality of the export products to cultivate a new batch of uh, uh, well-known brands in China in, as a part of our commitment to the Belt and Road strategy. This is uh, China Manufacturing uh, 2025. We want to build our country into a strong nation for automotive uh, industry. Another document is all about uh, the international collaboration on energy conservation. For the free trade zone, also we have a lot of uh, things to cover, but you can take a brief look at it. These are what we call the improvement of the trading environment as part of our efforts to reinforce and accelerate our strategy for the FTA. And we have signed a lot of FTAs, and some of the countries have become our key destinations for export. This year, very likely, we are going to sign the uh, ICEP. We call it 10 plus 6. For China ASEAN, the upgraded version of the ASEAN agreement does not cover such category as automotive industry. And also other documents will cover such things as how to improve the trade liberalization, to improve the trading environment, how to encourage the companies to go out, and uh, too many things to cover for the policy or outlook in this part. Next step, of course, the free trade zone, one belt, one road, the BIT, internationalization of industries, and the going out of the corporates uh, will be all important. And many people will say that uh, uh, in the next 10 years, China will sign more FTAs with Russia, USA, Japan, India, and other countries. So if that is the case, then uh, the uh, tariff prefer pre preferential policies, trade, investment, and liberalizations will allow more companies, especially for ATA par FTA partners, uh, to go international, and they will deliver more benefits to China. So uh, there will be uh, less restrictions over the foreign-funded uh, companies, because in the past we have those uh, restrictions over the uh, share participation. And also One Belt, One Road will uh, be another key hot topic. In the future, of course, the automotive industry will be becoming more and more international. TPP 
Trans-Pacific Partnership. We also changed the current uh, landscape due to time limit. I will skip this part. For export analysis, uh, we are facing grim situation for the export of uh, cars, and we are also facing downward pressure in the short term. We are facing daunting tasks, challenges, especially the uh, European debt crisis, the Middle East, in the North Africa. Uh, the uh, political instability has rendered a great instability of the future world. According to IMF's prediction, there will be some slowdown of uh, different economies by different margins. So we have a forecast that uh, this year the export of uh, automotives will continue to go down for internationalization of this industry. As I've already covered all these uh, eight trends, uh, the uh, integration, reorganization, but generally speaking, the export volume will be on the increase. Secondly, the uh, companies will pay more and more attention to internationalization. International brands will uh, be attracting our attention. Thirdly, New emerging markets will be key. Generally speaking, uh, we are moving towards uh, privately owned enterprises for the whole industry. And the foreign enterprises will also fulfill their exporting huge volume so that China will become another key uh, international export basis. So if we can export about 5 million cars to the world, that will be what we really call an international market. But uh, I think still uh, we have to do more. And also we encourage more people and more companies to set up their plants overseas and more M&A and also go international for the whole industrial chain, including downstream, up, upstream, midstream, for the spare parts accessories. So conclusions and suggestions, we encourage and we suggest that all the companies should go international, and uh, this will be key to the future survival of uh, corporates. The, com the Chinese government has a lot of uh, ways to encourage the companies to go international. But still, we are entering into a new normal from high speed to normal speed or to low speed. I think that for the next 10 years, uh, many Chinese branded companies will have to retreat uh, from the market uh, because of the new normal and also because of the ever increasing regulations for energy conservation and the much fiercer competition. That's why we have to uh, use the international practices to govern our future practice. So we have to use the international resources to pay attention to international collaboration and international M&A. This will also bring new opportunities for all the companies, especially for the uh, uh, spare parts manufacturers and auto manufacturers. Uh, last but not least about us, our organization, this is a, a key organization under the management of uh, China Auto Technological Research Center, and uh, this is also a quite well-known policy institution. We are founded in year 1997, and we have uh, supported the uh, many documents and regulations of the government. And so due to time limit, I have to stop here, so I'm looking forward to your comments. Thank you. Just now, Mr. Wu has used a lot of statistics and uh, figures to tell us about the status quo of the China's auto industry, so we can still have some time for the uh, q and session later, especially about the uh, policy outlooks and also the future uh, suggestions. Second speaker is from China Railway Special Cargo Automotive Logistics, Mr. Gao Feng, President and the General Manager. Uh, so he will talk a lot about the direct transportation of the special vehicles for railway commercial cars. Morning, everyone. 
my great pleasure to be invited by the host to make a presentation about CRSCS. And also, I want to uh, use this opportunity to brief you on our development in terms of the imports and export businesses of our organization. Uh, these are the four parts of my speech. First of all, a brief introduction of my company. Secondly, the railway commercial cars international logistics business. Thirdly, uh, the current working plan for going international. Fourthly, the comparative advantages of this new model. Our company is affiliated to one of the three subsidiaries affiliated to the uh, General Railway Company of the People's Republic of China. These uh, three subsidiaries is the result of the uh, endeavor by the uh, China Railway Company to uh, build the railway business on a market-based economy. The Railroad Bureau is responsible for uh, rail transportation. Our specialty uh, cargo company is responsible for not only the railway transportation, but also the marketing and the development of the market. So from the, from the nature of the company, its point of view are different from the Aurora Bureau. The company, my company was founded in 2003. From a business development point of view, uh, the company was established later than uh, the establishment of uh, the company that specialized in the express transportation and uh, the container transportation. Specialty cargo provides uh, large size cargo transportation and the coal chain transportation, but uh, we were of a very small scale at the very beginning, or ever since we established this uh, China special. China Railway Special Cargo Transportation Company, we started to make large-scale business presence into the special cargo transportation business. Before we set up the company, we conduct thorough market investigation. Uh, we contacted many OEMs and other specialty cargo manufacturers. In 2006, the transportation uh, volume was only 50,000. By last year, we transported a total of 1.9 million, and uh, this year we're going to surpass 2.6 million vehicles for road transportation. So the business of the company is growing really rapidly. I think that's, uh, that's impossible without the great support from the China Railway Company, and also it's, uh, it's impossible without the support from the OEM and other suppliers. So here I would like to offer my gratitude to all of you. China Railway Special Cargo Transportation Company has uh, 9,000 trains that can transport vehicles and sedan cars. And so far we have uh, 8,800 double, double deck and closed transportation container and trucks. Uh, we also have several hundred of uh, open racks. So in total, we got a total of uh, 9,000 uh, trains that can accommodate the vehicles. We have the container 
trains uh, that can transport sedan cars as well as uh, the dry bulk. For my company, apart from automobile, we also provide transportation for large size cargo as well as the cold chain transportation. So my company is a subsidiary to the China Railway Special Cargo Transportation. So my company has three business lines. First of all, uh, we're responsible for establishing the transportation networks across different uh, vehicle users. And secondly, uh, we started to provide transportation services for agricultural vehicles. And thirdly, we are building uh, special trains to transport commodity vehicles, and we achieved some progress in this regard. This is the organization. This is the business presence of the uh, China Railway Special Cargo Transportation Corporation Limited across China. So far, we have uh, 16 subsidiaries. 16 branches and two subsidiaries across China. And we also have three specialty uh, subsidiaries uh, that are responsible for cold chain transportation and the maintenance of the locomotives as well as other trains. So basically, we're evenly distributed across uh, the entirety of China on this slide. You can uh, see our uh, business presence of the uh, commodity vehicle transportation and coaching transportation in China. We've got five advantages. First of all, we got uh, advantages in equipment, we got price advantages, we got uh, organization advantages, management advantages, and policy advantages. We're talking about our equipment, well, this is a double decker uh, trains for the transportation of sedan cars. We have a, a general, a general double decker trains, and we also have a special uh, double decker trains. And we're now in the manufacturing of a third type of double decker train. So, as uh, demonstrated by this uh, picture, one box can accommodate up to ten sedan cars. This is uh, JSQ6. It can accommodate not only sedan cars but also SUV, commercial vehicles, or vans. Uh, I'm talking about the, uh, the large vans. So for small scale, small sized vans, it's okay to put in this kind of container. This is our, our warehouse. So far in China, uh, we have more than a hundred uh, warehouse across China. Uh, we have more than uh, 200 railway stations that dispatches sedan cars and receive sedan cars. So basically, we've already set up a full-fledged network of transportation for our users in China. 
再一个就是我们除了这个 GSQ 这一种车型以外 ，Apart from the、uh, GSQ train， 板架箱就是大家看到屏幕上的右下角那个，这个板架箱可以装运。Uh, we also have a special container, which is、uh, an open-air container. It is、uh, capable of、uh, accommodating and transporting small-sized trucks. So basically, we use this kind of containers to transport small vans, small SUVs, and small trucks. Now we're applying these containers to agricultural vehicles.、Uh, this is a specialty fixture. Well, we can fix the、uh, sedan cars and other vehicles firmly to our trains.、Uh, we use fasten belt to make sure that all the four wheels of the sedan cars.、Uh, Is bound to the ground of the container firmly. In our in many years of operation, we've never encountered any、uh, property damages as a result of the poor binding technology. So we have a proven record. Uh, this is、uh, our distribution networks for sedan cars across China. We're tapping the full potential of train trans rail transportation. Ra rail transportations can cover very long distances.、Uh, they can carry a huge amount of、uh, cargoes. Last year, we transported 1.9 million sedan cars. More than 60%、uh, of these trains are scheduled trains. On this slide, you can see 60%. This is the statistic for year, for last year, but、uh, for 2016, from January to April, 70% of、uh, the trains for the transportation of sedan cars are scheduled trains. Our time charter. Apart from our very strong equipment capabilities, we also received a lot of favorable policies from the China Railway Company. We have access to favorable price. We have access to different kinds of rail, railway facilities, including the warehouse, stack ground. And loading and uploading facilities and equipment. We have a right to price the transportation services according to the market needs. And、uh, we have the resources to. Allocate the resources of the trains to wherever we need it. Apart from the existing 100 warehouse,、uh, we're going to build an, another 130 warehouses in the next five years along the railroad in China. So we have very good、uh, transportation fees. We have access to the facilities and and warehouses, and we also received a lot of capital injections and investment from the China Railroad the Railway Company. Well, last year we built 1,500 new trains, and this year we're going to build another 1,500 trains, but. Probably, we're going to、uh, increase that number to 2,500. So we we invest heavily into building up the transportation capacity. As a subsidiary to China's 
Railway Special Cargo Transportation Corporation Limited. We cover both the domestic as well as international market, meaning we provide a holistic transportation solution on the railroad. Last year, in order to build a strong business presence in import and export businesses, uh, there is a very popular way to do the sedan car import and export business, that is to use the containers during the recent couple of years. The containers cannot accommodate a lot of uh, sedan cars. And it's quite complicated. It's quite complicated to uh, load and unload the sedan cars. So we're not doing very well in developing the special containers for the transportation of sedan cars. There's a lack of connectivities. Uh, between one country to another in the rail road, so that serves as a hindrance to the development of a unified standard uh, special containers for the transportation of sedan cars. And that's why the Chinese government initiated the One Belt, One Road initiative. A joint venture was established last year to try to address this issue. This newly established uh, joint venture covers also the large size cargo transportation, sedan car transportation, as well as the cold chain transportation. But so far, we're, we started to pick up our international businesses. We provide holistic uh, transportation solutions, including custom clearance, document preparations, uh, physical loading and and unloading, and, and monitoring of the transportation process. So far. The international transportation route from Japan to China to Mongolia was established. And also, uh, we have a transportation route from the United States through China to Mongolia. These are some of the pictures captured at the national border. Next, I want, I'm going to talk a little bit about the challenges in international logistic businesses, especially uh, when it comes to car transportation. First of all, there is a lack of unified standards in on, on railroad technologies. So the specialty containers or specialty trains cannot move from one track in one country to another track in another country. As I told you, that the width of the of, of the railroad are, are different in different countries. So that's a, that's a big challenge. Well, in China, the rail width is 135, while in Russia, it's 1250. And in Kazakhstan, the rail width is 1250. After going through uh, Russia and Kazakhstan, when it comes to Poland and Europe, the rail track width comes back to a normal standard. In Southeast Asia, like uh, Vietnam, they use very uh, narrow road track. 
So that caused a lot of problems for direct transportation. Well, the second challenge is, is uh, the complicated judicial systems. Uh, we still need to sign a lot for bilateral contract between different countries. And thirdly, there is a lack of unified standards on uh, vehicle logistics, loading and unloading of vehicles, and warehousing. In, in Russia, the height of the sedan cars are higher than that in China by 50 to 60 centimeters. So that means we have to use uh, two sets of entirely different loading and unloading uh, facilities and equipment. And the warehousing facilities in China are different from the warehousing facilities in other parts of the world. Uh, in China, we're using uh, the fixed two times uh, three equipments to move the vehicles around the warehouse. But this is not commonly seen in other countries like Kazakhstan. We set up, uh, actually our recommendation is to set up a double-decker station, but you know, traditionally the overseas or the international pattern is different from the Chinese way of doing things. So these are some of the limitations or the restrictions. And also I want to say a few words about the going out uh, plan of our company. We are having a lot of discussion as to how to go international from the technology perspective. We have already mentioned about the wide and a narrow groove and how to ensure car shift. We are still discussing that within our own organization and uh, we have already had a pilot project of this one. The China Railway or General Administration has already come up with the first solution. The first way out is to change the wheel pairs. In other words, we need some adequate number of wheel pairs to ensure the shift so that uh, it can uh, be uh, used both on the narrow rails and also the wide rails. Also, we have already the international practice in the world, which is the automatic adjust uh, automatic adjusting pattern of the uh, rails. It can be wide and it can be narrow. So these are the technology uh, details. Secondly, about the uh, transportation fare or the uh, cost. So we hope to get more support from the International Federation because, you know, the Russian internal price is quite cheap. Indeed, the price of uh, Russia is much lower than that of China, although it's very high within its own country. But still, I think that uh, we need to communicate more with the international partners to discuss as to how to make our uh, cost and the transportation uh, e expenditure more competitive. Secondly, I think that uh, we can get more support from other countries to ensure uh, more communications of the relevant organizations to ensure mutual benefit uh, on both sides. 
Thirdly, we can think of uh, some other ways to ensure a combination of uh, different transportation models from air and rail to reduce the operational cost. Eventually, we want to put it more on the international transportation. Thirdly, on the marketing perspective, we have the following few measures. First of all, inviting in and going out. By the end of last year, and also uh, for the first half of this year, we have already made a lot of uh, marketing activities covering some countries and using different methodologies to extend towards uh, such countries like uh, Hazakistan, Russia, Japan, and other European countries. And through Manchuri and Arlian uh, the uh, direct link has been established between the China's uh, special vehicle company and other counterparts in the world. For the uh, empty load marketing, we have a special uh, car type called GSQ7. It can carry not only cargoes but also vehicles. This is also another trend in the future. Apart from GSQ6 Audi cars, um, this Q7 will become a new car, which is bigger and more cost effective. It's, it's not only suitable for the export of cars, but also uh, carry other types of cars back after offloading. Comparative advantage. For our special vehicles, we have the following few advantages. First of all, car type advantage, more suitable for SUV transportation. Our double-decker car at present can carry land cruiser from Japan, so no problem for using our own type of car. We have already made a lot of tests. Secondly, we have our cost uh, efficiency advantage, but still we are not that cost efficient compared with other matured players in the world, but still in China we are well ahead of others. But many people will say, well, your cost is higher than expressways and highways, but you know, the efficiency is not uh, that low. For timeliness, of course, you can, you can see that it can save a lot of time. Now we have seen the uh, separation of transportation of both uh, passengers and uh, cargoes. So currently our time speed can be up to about 120 kilometers per hour. The daily mileage is about uh, 500 kilometers, no inferior to expressways or highways. Fourthly, transportation quality is improving all the time because it's uh, all enclosed, uh, all closed uh, vehicle. So we have uh, every reason to ensure its uh, quality and professional professionalism. So we have uh, these at above mentioned advantages, which can not only save a lot of uh, damage and unnecessary waste, but also be quite competitive compared with other models of transportation, especially including the expressway or the uh, highway uh, transportation. Apart from those uh, already used vehicles, we have uh, another new vehicle called Special Commercial Vehicles, or SMC, uh, SMV. This is the uh, general outlook of this car. The prototype is already coming out, and it is predicted that uh, this year we are going to have the first sample car, or the model car. From next year onward, it will be kicked into operation. After this car comes out, this single car can carry 
four cars that four traditional cars volume so this is really quite huge and um, you know this special type of car has already been been approved and it is uh, still undergoing some process of uh, verif verification uh, by the uh, authority. The last but not least, I want to say a few words about the hunchback whale of uh, transportation. This is quite uh, popular in the States. It has been there for many years. So after the driver after working for six hours, the driver has to take a break. But for China's expressway uh, regulation, we are not that strict. But still, we are working on this special way of transportation. And, uh, you know, this can allow more rest to for the drivers to take turns. In Qixihar, the first model car has already been re devised. And for import and export, I think this car will be very popular and more relevant. In the future, I think this will be uh, very relevant to our development in the latter stage. So that's all for my presentation. Uh, we are looking forward to your participation uh, into our future efforts. And thanks a lot for your care and support. If you have any further questions, you can come and communicate with me later. Thank you. Okay, just now, uh, apart from your business introduction, you have mentioned some key links. One is about international trade. In the future, if you use the railway, which is different from the uh, expressway. Indeed, as you have uh, correctly mentioned, uh, the uh, rail width is different from country to another. So if we really want to go international, we have to solve the problems, uh, including the technical spec, uh, harmonization, and the cost uh, reduction. So you have uh, mentioned a lot about your innovations, your development, and the car model development. And also you have uh, disclosed some uh, new development models to us, especially for passenger cars, or for commercial cars. Well, the first speaker mentioned about the general trend of the import and export, and also he mentioned about the downward pressure, in which logistics companies also face a lot of uh, problems. Mr. Gao has mentioned uh, the logistics channels, technologies, and equipment. So this will be quite useful to enhance the volume to further reduce the cost of uh, logistics transportation and which can also lay the solid foundation for the so-called basis of the platform that Mr. Wu has mentioned in his presentation. And also another key content is already covered by Mr. Gao. Apart from the changes of the management and also the technology, he has also mentioned that the basis is also quite important. Yesterday, uh, Mr. Chen, the Port Management Authority's head from Chengdu, has made a speech. It has uh, told us about the future prospects of the port management in the future in Chengdu. The third speaker will also view this issue from his perspective. The topic of his presentation is Chengdu Economic and Logistics Zone in the future. Let's invite Mr. Wang Weirong to the stage. The 
dear guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of uh, my district, I, I want to congratulate you on this uh, important in conference, and also I want to express my sincere gratitude for your care and support to us. I want to thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to introduce to you this uh, important topic. And uh, you know, for our company, uh, for our district, this is a national level economic and technological development zone. It's also the modern automotive industry and manufacturing base in Sichuan of our province. It's also the core functional zone of a high end manufacturing in Tianfu New Area. We have uh, the carriers of a Franco Chinese Eco Quarter and also the China Germany Automotive and Inter Manufacturing Industrial Park. Also, we are the core area of the automotive capital. These years, uh, we center our efforts on the uh, key pillars of uh, making this uh, place a better place for everybody to live. And we have attracted such companies like FAW, VW, Toyota, DPCA, and uh, Volvo to our zone. Also, we have attracted Delfo. Denso, Hanko, and Hisense to this zone. And uh, currently, the vehicle production of our CT, uh, CDETZ Z is about 1.6 million. It increased year by year in 2015. The total output is about 90% of the total output in the whole city, and in the, it is forecasted that in year 2025, uh, in 2016, uh, this district is going to launch, is going to turn out about 1 million cars in total. And in, by 2025, it will be up to about 2.6 million. So our region, our special zone, you know, our GDP is up to about 100 billion Chinese uh, yuan in 2015. That's number one among the top 10 countries in Sichuan for three years in a row. And we are ranking number 13 among the 218 national level uh, trade and economic zones in China. And uh, we are led by automotive logistics, the characteristics, logistics, and also the industrial, in including comprehensive logistics and the city distribution logistics. Th these are all the areas in which we see rapid growth. In 2015, uh, the total value of our social logistics of our district reached about 302 billion Chinese yuan. And these are some of the maps. Uh, you can see we have an easy connection and access to different parts of the western part of China, and uh, we can have easy access to the Chengdu International Railport, Sichuan International Airport, the Longquan, uh, Kunming Railway, and also the planned new airport. So we can also have easy access to the uh, water canals and the water transportational uh, regions and the channels uh, covering both the Yangtze River and also the Yellow River and also other big rivers in China, especially in the southwestern part of China. We can provide a really solid guarantee and basis for the future development. We are also dedicated to develop a so-called Longquan Logistics Center according to the master plan of uh, Chengdu City in the southern part of our district, we have uh, uh, planned a uh, Longquan district center that covers around 4,600 mu. We are here to support a so-called big car city and to promote the construction of a uh, automotive uh, supply chain logistics center for the industrial development. And uh, we can uh, develop the rail railway river road, the multi-model transportation Chengdu, and easily connect with the Yangtze River economic belt. So for the FAW logistics, FAW international logistics, Sino Trans, Mingshan logistics, Carry logistics, Blodges, Goodman are all the key names that you can find their footprint here. So the total warehouse space is about uh, 1.8 million uh, square meters. Already constructed, Florage is about uh, 650,000 square meters, uh, that's 36,000 of the total. 
under construction is around 47%, which is about 80, 850,000 RMB yuan. And the proposed area is about 300,000 RMB yuan, accounting for about 17% of the total. The single story house covers an area of about 790,000 square meters, 44 uh, percent of the total, and for the multi-story warehouse, that's about 56 percent of the total, covering about 1.01 uh, million uh, square meters, and uh, we can serve around 400 factories uh, within a radius of about five kilometers from the Longchuan Logistics Center, and uh, that covers downtown Chengdu within one hour, and uh, within four hours we can be reaching Chongqing and Luzhou. You know, this is a very important road port that provides uh, customs inspections, quarantine, bonded warehousing, container yard, integrated management services of different kinds. And we can also provide the uh, transshipment services to kind of container ships and uh, many others. So these are all the pictures that can help you to understand what we are doing now. We're also committed to the development of the uh, combination between manufacturing industries and the logistic industries. We're trying to provide the service covering the uh, entire process of the manufacturing of the vehicles and the uh, quality logistic companies provides great support to the development of the manufacturing companies. We establish a business presence in uh, Shanghai, Chengdu, and uh, Luzhou. We provide water transportation and water logistic transportations for uh, vehicles. In this way, we considerably reduce the uh, long-haul transportation cost. And uh, we also try our best to improve the efficiency in the, in the value chain in order to reduce the transportation time and lead time. I will also work with the manufacturing companies starting from the design of the manufacturing uh, facilities so that the manufacturing uh, facilities can be connected to our logistic facilities seamlessly. We provided embedded logistics services so that we can uh, reach out our service branch into the manufacturing company. And we also made huge investment into the logistic and warehousing facilities so that we can integrate with the manufacturing companies uh, seamlessly. By railroad, uh, we can transport the vehicles to Shanghai and to northeast China. That helps to uh, reduce the logistic cost, and also it uh, helps to reduce the burdens on road transportation. It shortens the lead time. And talking about the logistic of spare parts, we set up many uh, distribution center in southwest China to make sure that all these spare parts can be delivered within 24 hours. Chengdu uh, Jinkai district is the uh, district dedicated to the automobile and spare parts logistics. And, uh, within this uh, district, it is our responsibility to establish a comprehensive uh, logistic facilities to connect to different uh, OEMs and manufacturers based on the implementation of one road, one belt strategies. We're trying to create a bigger market space for the logistic, logistic industry. As a result of the development of uh, Made in China 2025 and the development of the Internet, the logistic industry will undergo revolutionized changes. And that provides a great opportunities for the further development of the green, high efficient, low cost logistic industry in my district. We're still facing a lot of challenges that needs to be addressed in the future here. 
essentially help to get your support and your advice. We're now pressing ahead with the uh, infrastructure constructions and we're trying to design the new special zones for logistic industries and special customary regulatory zones. There will be a lot of federal policies, including the uh, taxation policies to support the growth of this industry. Last but not least, I want to offer our special thanks to automobile logistic uh, magazines as well as uh, China Purchasing and Logistic Association Federation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wang Wei. Through your presentation, we know that there is a special economic development uh, zone uh, which is dedicated to automobile industry and automobile logistic industry. So the logistic uh, industry zone will provide great support to the other people companies within your economic zone. So that wraps up uh, all the three presentations. I just wonder if there's any uh, questions from the audience. If you have a question, raise your hand and uh, a microphone will be given to you. So I have a couple of questions. My first question is to Mr. Wu. So after listening to your wonderful presentation, I, I realized that you have an in-depth uh, a study into the import and export of vehicles. So when we talk about the uh, import and export of cars, we have to talk about the import and export of whole cars as well as the spare parts. So uh, one of the challenges facing the parallel import is the supply of spare parts. So, can you uh, share with us what kind of difficulties and challenges facing the import of uh, spare parts and whole cars in the after sale section? Well, as a as a heavily regulated area. Well, last year, the Ministry of Transportation issued a document aiming to break the monopoly on the after-sale market. Because originally, the OEMs requested the forest dealers to source the spare parts from the OEM directly. The only authorized forest dealers have access to the original, original spare parts from the OEM. But the non-authorized uh, dealers simply do not have any access to the original spare parts from the OEM. So in order to uh, break this monopoly control by the OEM, uh, the Ministry of uh, Transportation issued a document asking a requesting and the transparency and the maintenance and repair of the cars. The opening up of the after-sale service will be a positive a factor to the spare parts market. For many premium cards, uh, the domestic spare parts manufacturers find it very difficult to get access to this section. 
In China, the spare parts are very expensive because of the strict control from the OEM. But once we have the right policy and the competition, and probably uh, in the future, uh, the demand and the need for imported spare parts will be on the rise. Well, many companies are, uh, are trying to make some investigations and studies into the third party uh, spare parts suppliers. Uh, it is a very hot topic and it's a very hot market. So, in, in the future, the new policies will uh, provide a lot of opportunities to other imported spare parts. This is the general trend. Probably, maybe uh, in the future, we're going to have a better customer experience. I have a question for uh, Mr. Gao. In your presentation, you talked about the rapid development of the road transportation in China, and you touched uh, upon a lot of technologies. You just said that last year, a joint venture was set up. to provide international transportation of commodity vehicles. Can you give us a little bit more information and details about that? Well, it seems to me that this, uh, that this joint venture is a strong business presence in China. So is it a kind of a proxy or agency? Probably I uh, missed one point out in my presentation. This joint venture, one of the uh, shareholders of the joint venture is a uh, China Container Transportation Company. It is its uh, subsidiaries in Ulaanbaatar, in Turkmenistan, and Iran. or port facilities in these regions and countries. It also has some facilities in South Africa and West Africa. But we don't have any uh, overseas center or our facilities. So that's why the two companies can work with each other. We're strong in, in, in China, we're strong in uh, commodity vehicle transportation, and they're pretty strong in international business operation and networking. So when we join hands, definitely, we're going to open up an international market. We just talked about the export of vehicles. Uh, well, yesterday uh, there was one presentation devoted to the train, tra rail train transportation connecting Chengdu and uh, Europe, and the loading rate of the return trains from Europe to Chengdu is not very high. So, do you think uh, there's a possibility to make use of the return trains, empty return trains from Europe to Chengdu? Well, at the very beginning, we, we should make full use of our own transportation capacity. We have our specialty uh, transportation facilities and containers. Our priority is to ensure the seamless integrations from one country to another. After that, Mongolia, Russia, Kazakhstan, till Germany. We're going to set up a you know a, a two-way round transportation uh, next networks across these uh, countries. Yeah, the, the source of cargo is right there, but you know you have, have to uh, put these cargoes 
in one container. That's something we need to uh, calculate very carefully. Well, last questions for Wang Wei. Tell me that uh, some branded uh, OEM and logistic companies have established in your economic zone. Do you have any spare land in your economic development zone? Uh, well, uh, in southern part of the economic development zone, it covers 4,600 mood of land, and most of these lands has been occupied. And uh, we earmarked another 4,000 mood of land for the development of a new economic zone. So we welcome more uh, investors and companies to establish a business presence in Longchen. Can you use one or two sentences to tell us what is the most attractive features of your economic development zone to attract the companies to make investment in, in your economic development zone? Uh, I think we can provide the best service within Sichuan province. Well, different economic uh, development zones have different policies, but I think our biggest advantage is service. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the audience? I have a question for Mr. Gao. If it's whole car transportation, when it comes to whole car transportation, how 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 do you, how do you cover the last mile transportation? You outsource the transportation, or you do it by yourself? Uh, the second question is that last year you uh, transport 1.9 million cars, so what is the damage rate? Well, the last mile transportation is something that we should pay special attention to. That's why starting from last year, uh, we made some changes to our business portfolio. We started to do the last mile transportation by ourselves in order to improve the quality of the service. We got two ways of covering the last mile. Well, we outsource part of the business and uh, we retain some of the business to ourselves. For the outsource suppliers, uh, we will subject them to very strict criteria and standards. And we only work with the partners that have been worked with us for a very long time. Uh, we only work with the companies with a very good reputation. Probably in the, in the, in the future, um, we're going to do the same thing with international transportation at vehicles. We have subsidiaries and, 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 and branch companies in different parts of the world. Well, the damage rate is, is probably uh, very close to zero. Last year, it's, about, it's, it's less than 0 0.4 per thousand, so it's pretty low. All right, any other question? So it's uh, tea break time. I think uh, during this session of discussion, our three discussants and panelists gave wonderful presentations covering uh, import and export uh, policies and international transportation. 
the next session will go deeper into some topics of common interest. So now let's have a tea break. Thank you. Thank you.